Here on The Bioneer, I like examining the workouts found in anime, comic books and movies to see what's possible. I believe that training should be exciting and that we should be more ambitious about our goals. We shouldn't be content to train like everyone else, but should find ways to express ourselves and push physical culture forward. Fiction can be a great source of inspiration. That said, I hadn't actually watched Kanichi until some people started asking me about the concept of pink muscle. This came up several times in fact, so I decided I'd tackle it, as there seems to be some misunderstanding surrounding how muscle fibre works. Oh, and guys, of course it wouldn't be right for me to cover this topic without giving a shout out to Jack's Blade. He previously covered Kanichi's training, not focusing specifically on this bit so much, and generally he makes all kinds of anime workouts, and they're really cool, so you should go and check him out if you're interested in that kind of thing. The idea is this. One of Kanichi's masters, called Akisame, has converted all the muscle in his body to what he refers to as pink muscle. This created a physique comprised of the most powerful and adaptable type of muscle, with none wasted. But old Akisame, he ignored conventional wisdom and followed his own theories. He believed that muscle type could be changed, and after 20 years of bizarre training, he had converted all his red and white muscle to pink. So, while he may not look all that strong, what you see is 100% muscle. He's like a rock. I doubt that guy has a milligram of body fat on him. So, is this possible? Well, according to the show, there are three types of twitch muscle fiber. Slow, red, fast, white, and in between, pink. The human body is made up of three different kinds of muscle. White muscle that's good for fast, sudden moves but lacks endurance. Red muscle that's got endurance but not much power. And in between those two is a bit of pink muscle that's supposed to have both qualities combined. This correlates well with what we know. We have type 1 muscle fibre, aka slow twitch. This is oxidative muscle fibre that is used for aerobic exercise like running. It's slow to contract, smaller in size and produces less force. However, it also allows you to exert yourself for longer periods, it's more efficient. This fibre is indeed red in colour, owing to the higher oxygen content. Then there's type 2 X muscle fibre, aka fast glycolytic or super fast twitch. These are anaerobic. This allows for more explosive force and speed, but also fatigues much more quickly. You use type 2x during your one rep max or when sprinting at top speed off the starting block. This is incorrectly referred to as type 2b by like everyone, even my personal training textbooks. Finally, type 2a muscle fibers, aka moderate fast twitch, are intermediary muscle fibers. These are useful for short durations of more intensive exercise such as lifting weights. They are less energy efficient than type 1 muscle fibre, but more fatigue resistant than type 2X. What Akisami has allegedly done then is to convert all of his muscle to the pink type 2A and therefore achieve the perfect mix of explosiveness and endurance. Unfortunately, this time it's entirely fiction. Sorry to burst your bubble. Not only is this impossible, but it also wouldn't be desirable even if it were possible. But we can take some interesting ideas from it and use it to illustrate some things about the human body. As is often the case, the fact is in some ways stranger than the fiction. First, the good news. Contrary to popular belief, you actually can convert type 1 muscle fibre to type 2A. Moreover, a lot of muscle fibre in untrained individuals is actually made up from hybrid types that are two types of muscle fibre at once. Training increases specificity by creating more pure fibre types. In reality though, a 10% change would be considered fairly impressive and much more than that starts to become unlikely. Type 1 muscle fibre is far less prone to changing type as well, so changing all your muscle fibre to type 2A is strictly only going to happen within the realms of fiction. And there's good reason for this. You actually need a good amount of slow twitch muscle fibre. Apart from the fact that slow twitch is what allows you to run long distances, which even Akisame would presumably need to do from time to time, there's also the fact that slow twitch muscle fibre works all the time to keep you upright. The amount of each fibre type varies from one muscle group to the next. While your biceps consist of a lot of fast twitch 2A fibre, just over 50%, your abs and calves consist of a lot more type 1 fibre. Why? Because your arms hang by your side all day until you need to use them, often for a strength requiring movement or a very quick movement. Conversely, your abs are slightly contracted all day, just to keep you upright. If you were comprised of 100% fast twitch muscle fibre, you'd eventually gas out and collapse because you'd be exerting so much force just to stay upright. It's also slow twitch muscle fibre that gives us extremely fine motor control. When you engage in any movement, the brain needs to recruit motor units comprised of muscle fibres. These are arranged in size so that you have some small groups of slow twitch fibres and some big groups of fast twitch fibres. Now let's say you want to move your hand just a millimetre in one direction during some calligraphy or disarming a bomb. You'll now want to apply just a tiny bit of pressure and so you'd recruit just a tiny amount of extra force from your small motor units. If you only have fast twitch fibre, then your arm will jerk suddenly in that direction and it's game over. 
If you want more proof that you need both types of fibre, just consider that this separation between type 1 and type 2 is seen all throughout mammals, suggesting that it's an evolutionary imperative. The other issue here is that converting all your muscle to type 2A would mean losing that type 2X muscle fibre, something that no athlete in their right mind would want to do. Actually, most types of training, even lifting heavy weights, will change most of your type 2X fibre to type 2A. You only have extremely small amounts of type 2X relative to type 2A. This makes sense given just how inefficient type 2X is from an energy standpoint. The only time you need to create more 2X is when you're moving extremely explosively, such as when lifting your 95% one rep max for an Olympic lift, or when sprinting off the starting block in a race. But while fast twitch fiber is five to six times faster than slow twitch fiber, super fast twitch is actually 20 times more powerful. Those few super powered fibers make a world of difference when it comes to your max strength and speed. In short, you do not want to get rid of all of them. But what lessons could we take from Akasami? One interesting concept is training for fibre type. Typically, when lifting weights, we will stick within rep ranges somewhere between 3 to 20. In all these cases, we are training the type 2A muscle fibre predominantly. This makes sense for bodybuilders given that type 2 muscle fibre grows about twice as much in response to this kind of training, resulting in a more impressive and bulky physique. It makes sense for powerlifters too, who can still generate a huge amount of explosive strength this way. But if the powerlifter really wants to maximise their explosiveness, then they need to train at 95% of their one rep max to encourage the maximum amount of type 2x fibre involvement. Alternatively, they need to maximise their rate of force production by focusing on the most explosive movement possible, called compensatory acceleration. This could be combined with plyometric and ballistic style training. At the other end of the spectrum, it may also make sense to train in a manner that is going to fatigue the slower twitch muscle fibre. I'm not suggesting combining long distance marathon training necessarily, but using those long drop sets and super high rep ranges to fatigue all the muscle that you can. The same goes for performing yielding isometrics to failure. In other words, I'm talking about getting to that point where you can't even lift 5 kilogram dumbbells anymore, or perform even a single push-up. It's only at that point that you've fatigued with not only the biggest motor units, but also a good proportion of those slower ones. This can increase capillary density, slow twitch muscle fibre is supplied by a greater density of capillaries, and it can thereby improve work capacity, recovery, and more. Plus, you'll be hitting both types of muscle fibre with the stimuli required for growth, meaning that you can eke out just a little extra size. If we're going to imbue a fictional character with super-powered muscle fibre though, then there is a cooler and more realistic way that we could do it. Because locked away in your genome is the potential for not three, but many different myosin isoforms. These are dormant throwbacks to our evolutionary history, not normally expressed by our cells. In theory, using gene doping or some future training technique that we haven't yet discovered, we might be able to someday unlock this hidden, ancient potential. That could include tapping into the true type 2B muscle fibre, usually only found in small mammals like mice. Ever wondered why mice move in such a jittery and explosive manner, why they can turn their heads so quickly, or the same goes for squirrels or other little critters? Well that's thanks to that type 2B muscle fibre, and if we could flick that switch in human muscle, we might witness untold feats of speed, explosiveness and athleticism. But for now, that also remains strictly within the realms of fiction and speculation. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys, if you did then please leave a like and share it around, that helps me out immensely. Subscribe to the channel if you want more like this, and if you are interested in combining unique and alternative forms of training in order to achieve unusual results, then you might be interested in my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training, and there's a link to that in the description down below. Stay tuned for more like this, hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a ton for watching, and bye for now.